It was either Thomas Jefferson or maybe it was John Wayne who once said, your foot will never get well as long as there's a horse standing on it. By the same token, a family will never move to the suburbs if they don't leave the city. My husband Jim and I often talked about leaving the city, but we had a good deal on the rent, so we stayed a little longer, about 15 years. Our friends had all fled, excuse me, I mean moved from the bustling, exciting city. A friend of mine, Marge, even had a little workshop of her very own. Oh, how I longed for a little space of my own. I knew I could be a brilliant writer as soon as I wrote something. I talked to Jim about it, and he said he would think about it. And meanwhile, he fixed up an office for me right in our cozy little apartment. Kelly, very original. Mom? You! I'm not going to be out for dinner. I got a basketball game at Phil's school. Uh-uh. You're not going into that neighborhood at this time of night. Oh, Mom, I promised him I was going to play. He's getting so mad. Now look what you've done. You could have given her a concussion. You guys want to know something about F. Scott Fitzgerald and Shakespeare? They weren't mothers. David, read the Times. I was mugged. What? I was mugged. Somebody stuck a gun in my back and said, Oh. Took all my money. Honey, are you all right? Did he hurt you? No, no, no. Well, where? Where did it happen? Right down at the corner. He just took the money and ran. How much did he get? Just your allowance money. Honey, what did he look like? I don't know. He said, don't turn around. I was shaking like a leaf. I'm still shaking. It probably wasn't even a gun. Probably just a piece of pipe or something. And here I was worrying. Honey, please. Please, let's let's just go for a drive Sunday in the suburbs. It won't hurt to look around. It'd be all right. It won't hurt to look around. <laughs> day was finally here. Jim and I had found the most wonderful little house, only a few miles from the city. He was as enthusiastic about it as I was. With Jim, however, the enthusiasm's not always right on the surface. But I knew him well, and after all, I'd been married to him for years, hadn't I? And I'd seen him for several minutes each morning and evening, and I could just tell that deep down inside, he was ecstatic. Our adventure had begun. The early pioneers couldn't have felt more enterprising than we did. Westward ho! We were off to the raw frontier. We were off to fun and joy and air, trees, creativity, togetherness, crabgrass. got out, I could feel the family harmony increasing by leaps and bounds. Baby, honey, sit down. Daddy can't drive with scissors in his hair. That's trying to cut his hands off. Dorothy, please find something for Davy to do. Honey, sit down. Come on, sit in the back. Look out the window. <laughs> Are we there yet? Kelly, when we're there, I'll stop the car and we'll get out. We haven't seen this far before. We didn't have the kids along with us. It's my window and I say when it goes up or when it goes down. Come on. Mom, is it on my window? Let it be your little brother's window today. Boy, it sure pays to be born last. Roll it up. Mom! Now, stop it, both of you. It's not going to be anybody's window. I'll have it boarded up. 
Oh, smell that fresh air, kid. My life's over, that's all. I've been pulled up by the roots. I'll never see Phil McGonagall again. You hate Phil McGonagall. Well, I'll still never see him again. Mom, I think I'm going to be sick. You're not going to be sick. That's my final word. Steve, get your hand in the car. It'll blow off. Or how many kids had their hands blown off last year? 23,000. Mom! Dorothy, please find the Sit on your hand. similar, don't they? It's hot in here, Mom. All the apartments in New York look similar. Mom, it's really hot. I hope it's not around here. Are we close yet? Yes, dear. We're at the boonies. Don't say that again. 105. One, it's 121. I think you're going the wrong way. Wrong way? Wait, 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 wait. We've already been here before. Where are we? Gee, it's pretty here. 808. No, it's 121. I swear. There's 812 and 816. Where are we? Numbers change every time I come around, I think. It's just like that one. That's not it. We'll never get there. What if we have to go shopping? Is there a market here? We'll go hitchhike. There's a market. They are all exactly the same, aren't they? No. 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 I think we've seen this part before. Are we going in circles? I'm hungry. There any hamburger place around here or something? Hey, look at that up. Is that it? No. This is the third time we've been around this block, Dad. Is it? We're going in circles. Where is it, Dad? There it is! There it is! Look, it's so neat. Look at all the dirt. Come on. Look, I thought we were supposed to have some trees. We will. Builder just hasn't put them in yet. Well, give me the keys. Oh. <laughs> How much landscaping comes with the house? We're down for five maples, eight tacks. <laughs> Evergreens, two ash, four locusts, two flowering mother-in-law tongues, and 109 living rose hedge plants. Hey, Mom, Dad, Shrubbery's in here. Where? Here in the window ledge. Evergreens and maples. I got three sticks and a running frog. That's my room. No, there's no water. The salesman said just to make a note of everything we find wrong and call the builder. Mom, the toilet in the back doesn't flush right. <laughs> you sure found that out fast. The furniture is here. The furniture is here. Before you know it, it'll be just like home.
Hi. Welcome to Oak Haven Manors. I'm Helen Wentworth, two houses down. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the one with the yellow garbage can. Oh, how depressing to be summed up that way. <laughs> uh, well, come in. I'm, I'm Dorothy Benson. Uh, Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hey, listen, you haven't seen that kid around here that doesn't belong to you, have you? No, not today. Well, he has a way of blending in with other families. Once we lost him for two weeks. How'd you find him? We saw him pictured with the Robinsons on their Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sit down. <laughs> oh, dear. You got any kids? Uh, three. Oh, is pets? No. You got kids? Four. Oh. Pets? Two ponies. Ponies? Well, Great Danes ponies are the same thing. <laughs> Gee, this reminds me of what I went through a year ago. <sighs> if I can be of any help, just holler. Oh, thanks. But, uh, I, I just have to call the builder. The builder? Yeah. There was a number right here. The salesman gave it to me. Oh, that number is a candy store that takes messages. You'll never hear from the guy. What am I going to do? All the windows are painted shut. If I plug in the toaster, the kitchen lights blow out, and the, the washing machine just sits out there and groans. Is your husband at all handy? We had the only toilet seat in the city that was held together with silly putty. As long as we've been thrust into this wagon train light, I'll try to do a few of the minor repairs. See what I've got here. Cork, curler, a poker chip, and a book of rain soap matches. And a pair of pliers. Uh, what do you need first? Storm windows for the entire house. What else? Well, if we don't get the washing machine fixed, the kids are going to be going to school in aluminum underwear. Where is it? a block back there. Oh. Well, I... I found it in the middle of the street. Well, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Stay there. I'll get it. I had it right to... Right, I'm just so loaded here. If I'm not sure loaded, I, I'm, I'm overloaded. What you have to do is zipper up this bag. Right, yes. Okay, you okay? Y yes. Okay, you're on your own way. Thanks so much. That's very neighborly. Thank you. Have a good day. for the confidence. Here, help me with that. I think the ice cream has had it. Oh, I guess I'll have to shop before the sun comes up. Well, maybe you ought to get a car. Never. I love the fresh air. I didn't move out to the suburbs to be cooped up and scoot around town in some feet decadent car. Huh? Oh, did you leave the TV on? Davy's watching it. Wonderful.
thought you'd kick the TV habit since we moved out here, but lately you are starting to revert. When you grow up, I want you to be able to walk and to talk and to do things. But whenever I try to do anything, I'm a big flop. What do you mean, a big flop? I left work 20 minutes early to beat the rush. There were three cars ahead of me, all going 15 miles an hour. If you leave work 20 minutes early, it takes 40 minutes longer. I wish I was a simple shepherd. No throughways, no taxes. Our campaign for the chocolate cereal was thrown out. We may lose the account. Why? I don't know. It could be that it was good and they don't know, or that it was no good and they do know. I'm gonna have to stay in town one night next week to work it out. What's the matter? She called me Fumble Fingers and Jerk. Who did? Everybody watching me at baseball practice. You mean your little league group? Oh, uh, silly kids don't know what they're talking about. It was the parents. Well, I think you ought to forget it if everybody's crazy like that. I don't want to forget it. I want to play. Come here. Listen to me. Nobody's perfect. It takes a lot of persistence. Persistence? Didn't take any persistence for Beezy Meredith. He doesn't even try and he's perfect. And yeah, there are people like that. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. First chance I get, I'm gonna teach you how to catch and throw and all that stuff, okay? Really? Uh, okay, got a hug for me? Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go wash up for dinner. Uh. Are you see? You couldn't play ball with him like that in the city. I can't play with him out here either. I was always lousy at baseball. Hi, Mrs. Benson. I'm Hal Watson. We talked earlier on the phone today. Oh, yes. Uh, my husband just got home, though, and he's a little tired. Oh, okay. Well, this won't take but a minute. Just a couple of Get acquainted, call. Hi, Mr. Benson. Don't get up. Hal Watson, Triple Supreme Insurance. Your charming wife invited me over here this evening to spell out a few facts of life for you. Now, uh, lovely home you've got here. Oh, well, I see you have kids. Here. Oh, please, sit down. This won't take any time at all. Okay. That's for you. No, that's for me. That's for you. That's for you. And... Okay. You've just moved into your own home. Your kids are playing in the backyard, their own backyard. Finally, you're employed. And you stay home all day and bake bread, right? You must be just exactly like the family in this picture, right? What if this happens? How'd you do that? No, you're missing the point, Mrs. Benson. What happens to this happy little family when suddenly Daddy is out of the picture? They're trying to repossess the car. They're taking back the house, the furniture. The children are crying. Mommy doesn't know which way to turn. Do you know what this means? It means I get custody of the kids. It means Daddy didn't make plans. Well. Fortunately, it is not too late, Mr. Benson. You can still protect your loved ones with Triple Supreme's mortgage insurance. Fortunately, when you're young and healthy, well, the premiums are nothing. But when you get older and, and develop uh, circulatory disorders or a heart condition or an aneurysm, well. This coverage would not be available to you at any price. Yeah, there isn't. What about when mommy leaves? Where am I going? What kind of insurance do you carry on yourself? Well, I... 
We have a policy around here. Look, could you leave this stuff and let it's me... It's probably be... just your basic burial policy, right? Well, I don't like to be flippant about something this serious, but that kind of policy won't get you much more than having her propped up in a church of their choice while Perry Como sings on a record of chorus, Don't Fence Me In. Then they stick her on a public bus, and God knows what they do with her then. No, not for her. I recommend the Happy Homemaker... Compromise I'm a little tired package. right now. Could you just some leave this stuff and maybe I'll be in touch with you at some future time, really? Uh, Never pays to hesitate, Mr. Benson. You know, the years flit by and then all of a sudden I it's really too late. I'm really about to lose my mind. I strongly suggest that we do this some other time, really. Got it. Okay. I've overstayed my welcome here, so I'll just be running along, but do keep this. Thank you. You keep this and everything there. I'll just be running along. Okay? Thanks so much. Oh. You know, you're both such bright people. I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to ask you this question, but... Well, you are setting aside $50 a month for each child's education, aren't you? No, don't bother to answer. Of course you are. Uh, if, if you're not, this is a... Look, no, excuse me, excuse me. Really, really, thanks a lot for... Can, can we do this another time? I'm, yes, I'm, I'm really... I'm sorry to, you know, but I just... I just... Thank you. Okay. We'll, we'll talk again. Th thanks okay. a lot. Thank you very much. It was fun. I appreciate it. Why'd you ask that man over here? I didn't ask him over. He called me on the telephone, and he asked if he could come over sometime. And I said, well, yeah, okay. I mean, I couldn't say, no, don't you ever come over here, could I? We do have enough of all the kinds of insurance he was talking about, don't we? Of course we do. You know, I don't think we have enough coverage for the kids' college. Oh, we better give what's his face a call. Imagine the kids going to college. We were going to be well off by the time Steve hit puberty. Well, he hasn't really hit it yet. He hasn't settled into it. If we were married, I thought I'd be president of the company within 10 years. I thought I'd at least have one novel in the top 10. It's more than 10 years, huh? I want the president. <laughs> You've done great. I'm the one who hasn't done anything. It's not too late, is it? For me to start writing. Okay. Because I'm really going to start tomorrow. Good. Good. Mr. Tompkins said I had a flare. That was his exact word. Who's Mr. Tompkins? The washer repairman. You know.
are you doing? Writing. This is my office. Oh. Oh. Uh, are you ready? For what? The plant party. It's today. Oh, Helen, I don't know. I really ought to stick to this now that I've started. Well, how are you going to write about life if you don't live it a little? You're right. You're right. Um... Yeah, hang on. I'll, I'll just be a second. Okay. You're right. Hello? I'm out here. I knocked off at least four minutes on the throughway tonight, I think. The trick is not to get on its fence. That's where it all clogs up. But to go two miles further and get on a Chester. What are you doing? Waiting for our dinner to thaw out. Then I have to put it in the oven. Where's your mother? She's at a plant party. She just called and said that I have to look after them. I have to cook dinner. And I can't leave the house tonight, just so she can learn more about mealybug or something. Do your best. I gotta lie down. Dad! Dad! The truck is going! Oh, boy! Go climb and visit the giant's castle! No, Dad, Billy! It's really growing! When you were little, you told me the lions on the wallpaper were growling. We'll take you out there! Let's go look at it! Let's go look at it! Come on, come on! <laughs> Come on, let me see, let me see, let me see. Look, come here. It's the kids. Just wait till you see it. Look, here, and over there. Snow am I a liar? Snow am I not? You know something? I think this one has grown. I've created a forest with my bare hands. I planted that one. Yeah. Hi there. Oh, hi. Lester Wentworth. Hi, Jim Vanson. <laughs> Our wives are off gallivanting together. <laughs> oh, my son, David. Hey, thank you. Well, I see you haven't uh, given much thought to manure and mulch yet, have you? No, no, but I've, I've been intending to. I mean, I assume you're planning a lawn. <laughs> well, something like that. Uh, you can't leave it like this. It's an eyesore. I'll tell you something. This could be a showplace. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Look at this. You've got a terrific spot. I wouldn't wait too long, though. You'll be headed straight for sod, wet worms, and fungus by the first cold spell. Listen, you got any gypsum? Uh, I, I, I kind of doubt that I do. Uh, for starters, you're going to need a couple hundred pound bags of gypsum. See the soil? There they are. Alkaline. What you do is mix it up real good, see? Uh, 35 to 50 pounds to a thousand square feet of soil. Yeah. You're gonna need some well-rotted manure, uh, peat moss, some coarse sand, wood ash, just to grow grass. Man, you got a lot to learn about the country. Yeah, well, we just got... <laughs> Where would I get this stuff? Bluebird Nursery, right up here in Swallow Drive. Uh -huh. Listen, they're open till 7.30. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take you down there myself, make sure you get everything you need. Oh, that would be great. I appreciate it. Not too much trouble? Ah, no trouble at all. Oh, thank you. Show place. the bare beginnings of a fabulous lawn. A guy down the street, Lester Wentworth, gave me a few tips. Did you know that the first two to five inches of soil are the richest in minerals? Yes. I just came from something called a plant party. Will you look at us? We're practically farmers. See, I've got to move all the topsoil out, save it, loosen up the bottom layer, put in four different things, put it all back together again, water it in the cool of the evening for three weeks. And this is all before I even can put in any grass. This is, this is really a project. You know what? I love you. This is really going to be a show place. How was your party? Well, it was different. I'll say that for it. I learned just about everything that could possibly go wrong with plants. It's a wonder any of them ever survived. Jim? 
What, huh? What's all this? Oh, that's just some stuff I'll be needing for the lawn. It's enough for Central Park. Oh, I'll be using it up pretty quickly. If it's in your way, I'll move it. supposed to have it, but she's got her in-laws visiting, so she asked me to have it here. My lawn isn't ready for people yet. Jim, I think it's time that you met some of the people out here. It'll be fun. It's, um, uh, it's something called a, a cooking party, and, uh, these people come over and they cook dinner for everybody in these special pans, and then while we're all eating, they try to sell us their pans. We'll have to keep the people off the lawn. Right. What are you thinking? I was wondering what the expiration date was on my driver's license. What time do these guys serve dinner? I don't even smell anything cooking. When you're not supposed to, as he said, the food is wallowing in its own juices, which are locked underneath the flavor seal lids. Hi, I'm Brother Bud. <laughs> now, please, feel free to ask for refills of celery juice. My brother and I will have your dinner ready in two shakes. <laughs> Dorothy. Oh, hi, darling. Hello. How's little Jenny doing? Oh, she's just thriving. She's What's wonderful. Been... Very <laughs> cheerful. And I... Oh, I'd like you to meet my husband, Jim. How do you do? How do you do? Nice to meet you. Dolly. Dolly's the lady who gave us the plant party. Uh. And how's Diane? I, uh, well, Diane, I don't know. She's not so hot. Oh, my, I should say. Well, do you talk to her? Give her encouragement, the will to live, the incentive to grow? I pay more attention to Diane than I do to my kids. Good. Don't you just love them? Who? Your new plant friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jenny and <sighs> Diane. Good vibes in the house, Dorothy. Oh, thank you, Leslie. Leslie, this is my husband, Jim. Jim Leslie. Kafka! Oh, well, I don't know. How do you do? You're my college sweetheart reincarnate. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, he had that same sort of cute but repressed look. 
I hope you have a little more flexibility than he had. I hope, I hope I do, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, Leslie! Oh. <laughs> well, I'll see you in a minute. Like her, Jim? People. This is Ralph Corliss. He's good people, too. Ralph, these are our two new members of the community here, Dorothy and Jim Benson. I am very happy to meet you. Hi. Ralph. Nice to see you again. Hello. Couldn't Linda make it? No, she was scheduled for this district manager's meeting at the office. Oh. Ralph and Linda have reversed their sex roles. She works and he keeps the house. Isn't that refreshing? It's sort of a little sociological experiment right here in our own community. Listen, we're very liberal here. Different strokes for different folks, right? Now, Ralph here is just as welcome as any regular guy. <laughs> See, thanks, Lester. <laughs> See you in a bit. He sure is an attractive man, don't you think? A man does not notice that thing about other men. Well, you can tell the difference between Cary Grant and Peter Laurie, can't you? Uh, anyway, Ralph's lawn is a joke. Uh, have you seen these new sex education manuals your children are being given? No. Well, diagrams, right? Pictures of nude people. Shocking. Why, if the good Lord had meant for people to go nude, he never would have invented the wicker chair. <laughs> oh. Well, it's all right to be flippant, but I am concerned about the moral health of our children. Look at the lax dress code. Have you been past the schoolyard lately? It's a sea of bare midriffs and navels. Today, the tummy... Tomorrow, the tushy. <laughs> hey, yeah. See, this just isn't the atmosphere for a serious discussion. Excuse me. Dinner is served. Come and get it, or I'll have to throw it away. <laughs> hey, God, I'm just going to nip out and check the lawn. Sure threw me to the wolves tonight. I was back for the broccoli. Well, but while you were out checking your lawn, you missed further discussions on sex, motherhood, and equality. Dolly was against all of them. Wish you'd missed the sales pitch. Well, nobody else was buying anything. I felt kind of sorry for Brother Bud. After all, he did cook that wonderful meal for free. Free? This stuff cost me 150 bucks. I get the feeling you could pop down to the mall and get this for half the price. You could pop anywhere without a car. A car? Mm-hmm. Truly, you must realize by now that it is a bit difficult for me to get around out here without a car on my own. Are you telling me you want a car? Yes. I realize the timing isn't perfect right after I bought a few pans. You always said you didn't want a car. You said you didn't need a car. You said you wouldn't take a car if it were offered to you. I lied. It was practically a principle. It was a principle. It was my only principle, and I'm dropping it. Jim, I can't keep hitching rides with Helen all the time. It's embarrassing. Besides, I admit it. I want to be a part of things out here. I, I want to be one of the gang. I want to have lunch with the girls once in a while. I thought you were going to do all this writing. I will. Don't you see a car could free me so I can write? Jim, how much could a little second-hand car cost? A lot. No. Did you see that spiffy little sports car Leslie has? Yes. Well, it would be perfect for me. No. Yes, it would. It's low on gas. It would be a good investment. Just a nice, neat little compact car. That's all. Something for me to zip around in. How's it drive? Like a tank. You look great in it. I do? Yeah. Oh, you went after a little sports car. But for a little extra money, we get something we really can use. Look at all the room in there. Well, at least I've got wheels now. I have a little more freedom. Lester has freedom now. I picked up all this wood paneling so he'd be free to play golf. Oh. Helen has freedom now. I pick up her doggies from their beauty parlor while she's free to go to her beauty parlor. Jim. 
Jim has freedom now. I pick up his lawnmower. I pick up his shovel. I pick up his rake. Which leaves Jim free not to. Hello? Oh, hi, hon. Dot, I'm falling behind here. The chocolate cereal people still aren't satisfied with the skew of our campaign. So I, I got to stay and try to give it another skew. Yeah, well, I guess those skews can be tricky. So I better stay in the office again tonight. Again? Well, I need every minute I can get, and I can really save some time not going back and forth on the throughways. Yeah, you're right. How's my lawn doing? Any new seedlings come up? Well, no, I've been a little busy, but if you want, I'll go look. No, 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 it's hard to know what to look for. Listen, honey, you know what you can do for me? If you could pick up three 100-pound sacks of A1 hydrogen manure, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll just toss those suckers right on the grocery cart. Thanks, honey. I'll see you tomorrow night. Well, I hope so. Bye. Guess what? What? Now you're supposed to guess. Give up? <laughs> I give up. I played on a baseball team. I got up to bat, hit the ball, ran the beaches and everything. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could talk you out of that little league stuff, but I'm glad you're finally enjoying it. Oh, no, this isn't that team. This is the new team, the Corliss Clowns. Corliss Clowns? Yeah, you know, Mr. Corliss. Oh, yeah. Coach Corliss lets everybody play. Today we play the Tiny Tigers, and next week we play the Flyweight Boxers. Oh. How'd today's game go? Oh, we lost. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope the people watching didn't start calling you names again. Oh, no, Coach Corliss never lets anybody watch. Well, gotta hit your showers. Okay, now who, well, Thursday we're playing what, the Giants, right? All right, uh, Kenny, you're gonna catch, and Stevie, second base. You, did you bring your lunch? All right, listen, make sure you bring your lunch because I forgot my lunch and I'm starving, okay? Come on, honey. What I want, all right, you brought your lunch, great. All right, Kenny, pay attention now. Hi, Coach. What's going, Chris, here. All right, you guys take your positions, I'll be right with you, okay? Coming over, I told you he's not gonna like you watching. Hi, Davey. Hi again, Mrs. Benson. Hello, Mr. Corliss. You want to watch us practice for a while? Oh, well, gee, I don't know. Davey here tells me uh, you're not too keen on spectators. Well, not at the games, but sometimes at practice it's okay. Um, if Davey doesn't mind. It'll be okay, Mom. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on, Davey. David, play second. Okay. Do you want me to pitch? Uh, no. Brian, come here. You're going to pitch today, okay? Melissa! Come on in. Melissa! All right, sweetheart, your turn. Okay, get out of the ballpark. Okay, look alive, be happy! All right, Melissa. That's my girl! Go run, Melissa! Run, 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 run! All right! All right! Go to second, Melissa! Go to second! Go to third! Come on, look alive out there! Look at this! Hurry up! Wait a minute! All right, let's get on that ball! Come on! Hurry up! All right, you got it! Melissa, go home! Go home! Go home! All right, 
Home run for Melissa! Whoa! <laughs> what a team! All right, let's go. Come on. We need a batter. You, get up and play. David, play third. Here we go. Oh, Mr. Corliss, I just want to thank you. The main thing is that they have fun, right? Well, I sure did. Uh, would you tell Davey I'll be back in a little bit to pick him up? I, I've, I've got to go now. Sure. Uh, hey, you're a great audience. Come back, okay? I sure will. Thanks. Okay. Did we eat yet? Huh? Hello? Jim? Hello, cutie. Hi. <laughs> I've just about given you up again tonight. I didn't get out of the office till 6.30, and I had a couple of stops to make. You know what? What? The throughway was a breeze at this hour. I got to my usual shortcut, you know, the Wilma turn-off. Yeah? I said, the heck with it. I'm just going to zip along the main throughway. Well, good for you. I think it's important to be daring like that once in a while. You see the boys when you came in? They're all fine. What's all that racket? What racket? What? What is it? That's Arlo. I got him at the pound. He was free. Arlo, come here. Come on. It's a dog. It's Arlo. It's not a dog. It's a lion. Get him out of here. Send him home. Dorothy, I got to thinking about you and the kids last night. Arlo's a fantastic watchdog, and it'll be great company for you here all day by yourself. No dog. No dog. Mom, you can't. No, Daddy loves you. Yeah, well, here's the responsibility. We love dogs. Look how he smiles. Mom, I love you. All right, all right, all right. You can keep him, but that means you take care of him. You clean him, you take him out, you do whatever you have to do with him. I am having nothing to do with him. Well, they will. They will. They will. They will. Arlo! Oh, wait! Hold! Arlo! Don't be afraid of him. Tony. Oh, not a bad pitch. You're going to get a little bit to the left, baby. Bill, can you throw the ball back to the pitcher? Look at this. All right, all the way home. Come on, Aaron. Hurry up. Keep going. Go all the way. Look at this. Cut him off at the plate. Okay, next batter. Davey, you're up. Pretty good today, eh? Mom, since Dad's not coming home tonight, can we stop off for some hamburgers? I guess so. Hey, Coach, want to get some dinner? I'd love to. Hey, look, Linda's working late tonight anyway. If you don't mind, can my kids and I tag along? <laughs> Are you kidding? I would love to hear a low voice at dinner for a change. Fantastic. We'll follow you. Okay. Let's, uh, let's pick up Kelly and Steve. Come on, Arlo, just get in. Don't get in the front. Boy, I think the Corliss Clowns is the neatest team. So do I. You're crazy. You guys don't even know how to play baseball. Oh, what do you know? A lot more than you, wimp. Also, I was going to write a great book, but I never seemed to get around to it. What's the book about? You really want to know? Yeah. The murder mystery. Mm. I've got it all up here in my head. Now, the trick is to get it all down there on a piece of paper. You got a title? The Murders of Mary Murdoch. Uh-uh. It's a very clever plot. It's all about this girl, Mary, Mary Murdoch. Murdoch. And um, apparently, she's murdered twice in it. But, aha, uh -huh, there's this gimmick. No, 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 don't tell me. I want to read it. I love mysteries. You're kidding. When I lie about a thing like that, I'll buy the first copy. Oh, sure. Say, how how come you haven't asked me why I keep house while my wife works? 
Never occurred to me. Is that the absolute truth? The absolute truth is I am dying to know. Okay. Well, up to two years ago, Linda was working part-time a few afternoons a week selling audiovisual aids to schools. Mm -hmm. She was doing very well at it. So they offered her the job of district manager. She wanted to try it. The money was great. So I sold my business and took over for her at home. As simple as that? Hmm. It seemed fair at the time. That is incredible. I hate housework. It's not so bad. I mean, I'm not too crazy about cleaning the oven. <laughs> I said, the heck with it. I haven't been home in two days. I want a good meal. Uh, you mean if the coffee shop in your building had more variety, you wouldn't be here? No, I didn't mean that. Mm -hmm. I got home just in time. The lawn has started to dry out in spots. I get third billing after the meal in the lawn, but I'll take it. I missed you. Dinner in 30 minutes. Oh, count me out. I gotta go to a magician's meeting. Since when are you a magician? I took it up today. And I'm having dinner, Debbie. Hey, now, wait. Hey, hey, you guys. Your father finally drops in for a meal, and now all of a sudden you're splitting somewhere. You know how long it's been since we've sat down and eaten a meal together? I don't know why I'm asking you. You didn't even have teeth. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. If it can't be tonight, it's going to be tomorrow night. We are all going to sit in that dining room together as a family and eat only. A certificate of death, a recent one, will be an excuse for a no-show. After school, I was going to practice my signal for signals with Debbie and then go to the library. And I got a game to lose. I've got a five o'clock dental appointment tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Dinner. Together. Well? If we're not finished loving one another by 6.30, I'm gonna split. Now that we're all here together, let's talk, let's, let's share our day. That should be an enriching experience. Guess what seven words Ramsey, Ramsey Phillips says you can't use on TV? Not that enriching, sweetheart. <laughs> Dear, what would you like to talk about? Why don't you kids want your father to have a lawn? I mean, how do you expect that lawn to cope? Bikes, skates, football games. Steven, take that out of here and listen to your father. I know the lawn speech. It runs two minutes and 40 seconds. Very funny, but the fact remains that no one lifts a finger to help. I mean, you can run across it, you can tear it to bits, you can break its will to live. But does anybody contribute to its compost? No. I mean, maybe I should donate the front yard to the government for nuclear testing. <laughs> Debbie, dear, wouldn't you be more comfortable waiting in the living room for Kelly? She'll be with you as soon as she's finished with this family feast. Well, okay. But when our semaphore signals are sloppy, don't anybody blame me. Dad? <clears throat> Every kid in the neighborhood has a 10-speed bike but me. My skateboard's put down the middle. Oh, 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 yeah. What am I, some kind of Santa Claus? You know how much money I got as a kid? 25, 25 cents a week. 25 cents a week. 25 cents a week. You know what I had to buy with that 25 cents a week? You, you had to buy books, clothes, tuition, medical, medical expenses, and pay for your own entertainment. 
And if I owe my own books, clothes, medical expenses, pay my own rent and entertainment. And you know how old I was when I got my first car? 23, 23 years, years old. old. 23 years old. And you know who got me my you first did. car? You did. You did. I, got, I know a good joke. Can I go now? No. You just sit right there and let your little brother tell his joke. Okay. Now, what's yellow, of course? And, and, um... And has four legs and weighs four hundred pounds. <laughs> and uh, and 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 it goes with, with peep peep. You've got it all mixed up. How do you know? You never heard the joke. Stephen, would you let him tell it his way? Now, go ahead, sweetheart. It's wonderful so far. Finish it. That's all. Now you're supposed to guess. Give up? Yeah. A 400-pound canary. Oh! <laughs> Don't you get it? Isn't it two 200-pound canaries? Well, what's the difference? One 400-pound and two 200-pounders. No, 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 no difference. It's just that uh, that's the way I heard it, that's all. Well, if you heard it before, you said stop me! It's not my turn to do the dishes. I'll be right with you, Debbie. Just gotta get my flags. I hope there's an afterlife. An afterlife? Life after the kids are grown. I'm just trying to write. Oh, is that all? Why is it nobody ever gives me any encouragement? If a person got a little encouragement, they might get inspired. I'm going shopping. You want to come along? No, oh, I want to think. You can think while we shop. I know you need celery. What is it? Why can't... Why can't I just be taken seriously once in a while? I, I just want to write. That's all I want to do, Helen. I want to write. Hey, you really mean it, don't you? Yeah. Because when I, when I die and they put that tombstone up, out there, I don't want it to just say, here lies mommy, or here lies hey you, or here lies... Here lies uh, somebody's friend, or here lies Honey, or here lies Jim's wife. I want that tombstone to say, here lies Dorothy Benson, what a woman. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm never going to be a writer. That's just some kind of a carrot. I'm dangling in front of myself just to help me make it through the casseroles. So, you'll never be a writer. I'm old, I'm old, old, old. You know what it's like to get a ticket from a policeman who burps pablum? Dorothy, if you're not griping just for the fun of it, I have the perfect solution for you. Yeah? School. <laughs> school. I'm serious. Night school. Lots of old folks go to night school. Take a course in writing. That'll get you going. The classes are from 7 to 9 on Tuesdays and Fridays, and the teacher's a professional writer, so I can actually get college credit. You really want to do this? I want to do it. 
You want to go back to school now? I think I can dot her in and out. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, that's a, that's a fireside girl's cookie. You can let me. I, I made some space in the kitchen there. Oh, sure. Excuse me. You bought all these cookies? No, 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 no. The, the, uh, the fireside Excuse girls me. need a local headquarters, and we're in. Uh, they can't keep running clear over to the factory every time they sell a box of cookies. Why do you volunteer for all this? Oh, I, I didn't volunteer. I, I went out to the bathroom for a minute, and when I came back, I was the cookie chairman. No, after they applauded me and everything, could I? Debbie, I still have those boxes of cookies that you promised to sell. Yes, I know your grandmother died yesterday. She also died last Tuesday and a week ago Saturday. I'm not buying it, Debbie. I am up to my fireside girl's motto and cookies. I know they're mostly preservative and will therefore outlive us all, but they must have put some food in them somewhere, and that's not going to last forever. Debbie, it's been two whole weeks. We're all getting zits here from the aroma alone. Debbie, if these cookies are not out of my house by this weekend, I am personally going to come over to your house and set fire to your semaphore flags. Yes, you can tell your mother on me. Debbie, do De I've either got to get rid of those cookies or use them for coasters. Why can't you freeze them? Kelly, well, take Arlo for his walk. I'm bushed. Well, you're either bushed or you're washing your hair. you got to try for some other moods. Well, as soon as your father walks in that door, I am once again a schoolgirl. What do you think, huh? How do I look? Maybe I should wear argyles and penny loafers? What are they? Nobody's that young. Uh -huh. Hello? Hello? Jim, where are you? Oh, no, not tonight. Tonight's my class. My night school class in writing, you know, and I want you to stay with the kids. No, 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 no. Steve's not here. He's, he's off on a camping trip, junior loggers or something. No, it's too late. I can't get a babysitter now. Well, I guess it can't be helped. No. No, it's no great tragedy. I guess if I miss the first class, it's just an orientation type thing. But, honey, please remember next Tuesday. I can't miss it again. Okay. Bye-bye. Kelly, take these into the kitchen. I want to talk to your brother. All right, David, I've decided not to tell your father what happened in the car today. Even though I am still shaking from the experience. Now, I know you probably thought it was very funny to see your mother staring down the barrel of a policeman's shotgun. But believe me, it was not. Now, if you ever put a sign in the back window of the car again saying, help, I'm being kidnapped, I will move away from this house and not leave you the address. Jim, you're kidding. This is my night class again. 
my night school class in writing, one of which I have already missed, and there's nobody here to stay with Davy. No. No, I'm not annoyed. Why should I be annoyed just because you never give my schedule a second thought? So when will you be in? The weekend. Swell. I'll take Polaroid pictures of the kids so you can see how they're growing. A break. How, how about a cup of coffee? Oh, oh, I'd love to, but I, I can't. Davy tells me you're taking a night school to us. In writing. Hey, that's terrific. Well, it would be if I could ever get there. You know, I don't know what it is, but I just can never seem to find the time to do everything. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm taking a real estate course, and like study time is such a problem. Sure. Uh-huh. I think I'll give it a whirl in a little while. That will mean the both of us will be working, so it'll take some adjusting, but I... Oh. May I take your order? Yes. Coffee? Two cups of coffee, please. Two coffees? Uh-huh. Thank you. And... Oh, oh. Remember me? Brother Bud? The pan party. Oak Haven oh. Manners, right? Yes. <sighs> Hello. Hi. Two coffees, right? Coming right up. <laughs> oh. You are fun to be with, you know that? I mean, I'm very comfortable with you. Were you an athlete in college? A lousy one. No coordination. Really? Yeah, I find that very hard to believe. I mean, after all, you've got such a great build. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's your shoulders and uh, the height. Is your wife tall? Linda? Five feet, ten inches. Five ten? That's tall. You have a tall wife. I, I thought I was tall, but 5'10", uh, that's tall. How tall is Jim? Jim. Jim is, uh, Jim's tall. He's tall. He's, um, oh, he's about, uh, how tall are you? Six feet, two inches. Six feet, two. That's tall. Jim's tall. Huh. <laughs> Since we're all so tall, maybe the four of us can get together and play some basketball or something. <laughs> um, well, thanks for the coffee, Ralph, but I've really got to be going. Well, he hasn't come with the... I, I really can't miss that class again tonight. Could you just... I'm, I'm a student. <laughs> um, I'll be seeing you. Girl cookie. Again? And take it outside and use it as a frisbee. Mom, I think I'll upset. Give him two aspirin and call me in the morning, Kelly. I think I'd do better at Joey. All right, but you'll be home by 5.30, Davy. We're going to eat as soon as your father walks in that door. Mom. If I miss this class tonight, I've blown the whole thing. Mom. His foot's still out there from this morning when he looks really sick.
Oh, did you eat one of those cookies? Huh? All right, Kelly, um, you call the vet. Tell him I'm bringing Arlo in. Come on, baby. We'll fix you up. Come on. Uh, Arlo, what did Dr. say? He looks okay to me. Uh, Arlo, 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 come on, honey. Come on. Arlo. 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 Somehow he got a hold of a sponge and it expanded in his stomach. Is he okay? Yeah, he'll be fine. We just can't give him water for a year. Really? You forgot to catch my sleeping bag, and I've got a camping trip tomorrow night. I didn't forget. I'll do it in the morning. What time is it? 7.30. It doesn't look like dinner's even started yet. I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> you know, I really must teach you guys how to turn the oven on sometime. Jim, you're going to have to take the kids out for a hamburger. I've just got time to make my class. Oh, that thing. That thing. Loony mommy's loony little thing. I make fun of you because you like to sleep on the cold ground all zipped up to your nose. Mom, when you come back, will you help me with my Halloween costume? Oh, well, honey, it'll be a little late for that, but don't worry. We still have time to make your pirate suit. I decided to be an iguana instead. Well, that might take a little longer. Mom, can you drive me to Debbie's house? Kelly, I don't have time tonight. Mommy's limousine service is closed. Daddy's going to have to drive you. Doc? Why break your back dashing off to Piedmont High when they've got writing classes right down here on the mall? They're in the afternoon when you wouldn't be turning everybody's life upside down? Jim, that is a poetry class taught by a strange old lady with three names and 17 parakeets. My teacher is a published author. He's already had two plays produced. Okay, okay. It, it just seems to me that if you're really serious about this writing, you, you might try to get organized to the point where you might have dinner ready before you go rushing off. Could I help it if Arlo got sick? Now, is it too much to ask you to take the kids out for a hamburger for one night? No. No, I've only taken on two new accounts today to try to keep our heads above water, so why not take on some of your domestic chores while you go trotting off to school like some teenager? Keep our heads above water. Do you have any idea what it costs to live in this house? Insurance, taxes, car payments. And when are we going to get rid of those 99,000 boxes of moldy cookies you foisted on me? Foist? You use the word foist on me? You the great foister? You foist. A ten-ton truck on me when all I wanted was a spiffy little sports car. You foist a dog on me that was more trouble to potty train than all three kids put together. And you foist fertilizer on me every time my back is turned. Now we've got a vet, Bill. How did he get a sponge? I chopped it up and fed it to him in his kibble. Well, somebody ought to keep an eye on that dog. Well, you keep an eye on him. Or you, or you. Because I've got a hot flash for every one of you. This hired hand is resigning. Now, I am going to that class for two lovely hours. And I'm sure you'll all starve to death before I get back because none of you will be able to figure out how to open up the refrigerator. And if you want to save more money, why don't you try buying a little less manure? education book to clarify a couple of things for me. You're saying we have a sex problem? No, I'm not saying that. How was your class? Stimulating, I think. You think? I was so upset I couldn't completely focus on what he was saying. But I do know I want to continue taking it. And do it. Do it like you do everything else you want to do. Like what?
what else I want to do. Like moving us into this house for one big thing. You wanted this house as much as I did. You came home one night after being mugged and you said the neighborhood wasn't safe and we'd better get out of there. I was upset and you took advantage of the fact that I was scared by a mugging. We looked for houses for over a month before we settled on this one. You had plenty of time to collect your wits. You don't get over a mugging in a month. Besides, I was tired of being made to feel like a big flop because I couldn't give you everything you wanted. All I ever heard from you was I want my own space. I want a yard, I want an office, I want to write. And ever since we've been here, I haven't even seen you write a shopping list. Well, how would you like to do your work stuck in the back of a garage like a flat tire? How would you like it if I came down to your office every day and dumped a sack of fertilizer on your desk? I probably wouldn't even notice. I'm so punchy. You can't drive back and forth on the thruway for two hours every day and keep your sanity. If you wanted to write, you'd write. Hemingway wrote in men's rooms. Fine. Maybe I ought to try that next. Might just be the inspiration I'm looking for. Nobody is forcing you to keep these hours you do. We could get by on less money and you know get it. Get by, get by. Is that what life is all about, just getting by? Wouldn't you like to have a little money in the bank? It's all gone, you know, for this. Wouldn't you like to be able to take a trip or send your kids to college? Of course I would. We're a little low on cash right now. It'll just take time to build it up again, that's all. I know, I know, I know. I would just like to be able to take a new account if it came along. If only I could have some peace of mind at home. When? You're never here. And when you are, you, you're out on that lawn. Now a man can't have a hobby. Oh, yeah, you can have a hobby. So why can't I have a hobby? Who's stopping you? Lord, all I'm asking is you postpone a damn class once in a while. All right, all right. Maybe you're not stopping me from writing. I don't know, but you're sure not giving me any encouragement. Well, you marry somebody hoping that they're going to encourage you and stand behind you and not sneer and jeer and ridicule. I never ridiculed your writing. I guess you haven't. I haven't written anything to ridicule. What's the matter with us? Fighting over things like lawns and night school class and fertilizer. People don't fight over things like that. Maybe they do. I've heard of people splitting up over toothpaste brands. What are you talking about? You think that's what's happening to us? No, uh, no, no. I, I'm just talking about things that irritate people. I don't know what's happening. meeting this morning? Yes. I just got to finish signing on this badge. You need any help, David? No, I can do it. But I do need to ride for baseball practice. Okay. Where's he? He fixed his sleeping bag when Wednesday Kenny used to work on his magic act. Okay. Hi, Coach. 
Do you know anything about anybody in the neighborhood having an affair? Hmm? No. We've just been dishing about it. We cannot figure out who it can be. She's here. She's here. <laughs> Well, all I heard was that one of the so-called ladies of our community is uh, carrying on with another man in the afternoon. Oh, that's just somebody's wishful thinking. What'd she do? Spike the kid's peanut butter with sleeping pills the afternoon? No. <laughs> sure it isn't you, Helen? What, and give up my nap? <laughs> Marcy? If you find my front door lock and the shades pulled, you will call the police, ladies, because my head will already be in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to have an affair in these suburbs. Your car gets recognized, the bus service is lousy. Mm -hmm. There's too much glass and too many kids running in to use the bathroom. Yeah. Well, then it must be Dorothy. <laughs> Me? <laughs> How could I? My vocabulary has been reduced to four sentences. Close the door, don't talk with your mouth full, wash your hands, and you should have gone before we left the house. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't even know how to talk to a man. You don't have to. Let him do all the talking. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't mind having an affair with Ralph Corliss. Oh, Leslie, how can you be so teenage? Gee, hey, I'm just being up front. I'd tell my husband the same thing. And what would he say? Say... Thanks for sharing that. Well, Dorothy, you have got to admit that you uh, have a few little fantasies about Ralph. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that this is probably the most adolescent conversation I've heard in years. We should be sitting here discussing nutrition or carpools. I have to pick up Daisy. Well, excuse me. Okay, kids. Same time tomorrow. And don't forget your lunches. How was I? You're beautiful. Hi. Hi. Why, it looks like the team's improving. They're getting so good, I'll have to disband them. <laughs> How is there any gum in the car? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to get it. Especially Davey. He's been hitting a mean ball lately. He is. Well, I'll just have to have a talk with him about that. How's Linda? Oh, pretty good. Busy as usual. And Jim? Oh, he's fine. He's, he's very busy now, too. Could I buy you a hamburger and a Coke? No, I, I don't think so today, Ralph. I've uh, I got a lot of things to figure out. Hey, can I help you? No, I don't think so. I hope it works out. Thanks. You know, this isn't exactly the type of conversation I thought we'd have the next time we met. I know. But look, uh, there is a lousy bus service and all that glass and kids running in and out of the bathroom. Yeah, I, I think I finally figured those through ways out. I get it. I get it. Wash your hands.
Jim. Let's go back. Let's just pack up, sell the house, and go back. Are you serious? I have never been more serious in my whole life. I don't think I've relaxed for five minutes since we moved out here. You were right. It was my fault. I pushed and I pulled at you in every single direction until you had no choice but to give in. And I wouldn't let myself see what it was doing to you, all this work and the pressure. No wonder you had to bury yourself in that lawn. I'm sorry I made fun of it. You worked so hard and you did such a good job. Lester says it's the best looking lawn on the block. It is. And to think that you did all that while you were working and, and here I, I picked on you and I criticized you and I yelled at you in front of the kids. I yelled at you too. Not as loud as I yelled at you. Oh, Let's go back. What about your space? You don't want to give up all your writing. Space? What space? You were right about that, too. If I had any talent at all, if I had anything on the ball, I could have written anywhere. I want to give it up. I'm giving it up. It's given up. You sure about this? You know something? I feel better already. Ah, oh, maybe someday when the, when the kids are grown and we're filthy rich, I'll give it a whirl again. But right now, I have enough to keep me busy. What about the kids of going back the to the city? They can't just so easily, and they'll have all their old friends again. They won't have the same apartment. Won't be able to get that well, kind of look rent. around. There are other apartments. Oh, honey, I am just so sorry I put you through all this. staples, a pen holder with pen. The pad with a funny saying on it. Picture the kids and me. Of course, if you do want to quit, we, we, we can take it apart, but if you don't want to write, you could always come out here and, and, and just doodle. Or you could have that. You could look at the car. Or you could even scream. Well, when did you do all of this? Today. Today, Lester and I hit every shop on the mall. The old kid can still move when he has to. But, but the paneling. Oh, that was a snap. Well, did you go to work? I left as soon as I got there. They don't own me. lost that chocolate cereal account. Oh, honey. Oh, no, no, I hated that damn product anyway. My last suggestion was cereal can give you pimples. <laughs> hey, care for it. <laughs> honey, I think sometimes I'm the last guy in the world to give something. What? I've really been selfish and stupid no, about this. No. I, I, I know I haven't backed you and... You're the most important person in the world to me, and I, 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 would, I would really hate to see you quit before you start. Yeah? You know, I haven't been this happy since the doctor told me the rabbit lived. Benson? Uh, Frank Loring, County Building Inspector, Sewage and Drainage. 
I'm afraid you've got the wrong septic tank out there. I didn't know I had a choice. <laughs> Actually, you don't. You see, according to this, you've got a 621B. Now, that's not up to code, and we'll have to change it. Change it? Yes. We'll have a man out here dig up your lawn first thing in the morning, okay? Have a nice day. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Yes, they can't dig up our lawn, can they? What's going to happen to my maple tree? I spent an hour this morning. Oh, everybody take food. it easy. Nobody's going to come in here, make an announcement like that, and walk out of here. I would take this to court if I had to. Nobody's going to come here and dig up this lawn. Sorry, Mr. Benson, I could have sworn that septic tank was in the front yard. 